If you want to deploy an LLM endpoint, it is critical to think about how the different requests are going to be handled. In typical machine learning models, it is okay to queue them waiting for the machine learning server to be free for inference. But in the case of LLM, it can take a few seconds for a request to be treated. So how do we scale to hundreds of requests per second? Let me show you how. So when it comes to making a request to a machine learning model, large language models are very different from most machine learning models. The reason is that there's a large latency waiting for a sequence to be decoded. So when we send multiple requests to a model, how do we deal with the latency that is provided by a large language model? Very often, sequences can take many seconds to be decoded, and we cannot expect for each request to wait that long. So imagine that we have multiple requests from multiple users to the same large language model server. So there are some difficulties related to the input prompt. The input prompt may have different lengths. They may have different arrival times. So how do we handle those in such a way that the user experience is still good? So the typical way to handle that is to batch the different requests together. So let's explore first a very naive batching strategy. So let's imagine that we have three different requests. We have the request from user A, the request from user B, and the request from user C. So imagine that the different lengths that we observe here are the number of tokens that each input prompt may have. So for example, the request from user A has four different tokens, and the input prompt from user B has three different tokens. So this is just a way to represent the fact that prompts may have different lengths and are from different users. So if I were to batch the different requests together, I would need to pad the different requests in such a way that they have the same lens and I can input them together into the same LLM. So if I were to batch them together, in the first iteration of the decoding process, each input prompt would give us a output token. So we would have the first output token from the input prompt A, would have the first output token from the input prompt B, and would have the first output token from the input prompt C. So the way we do it is that we autoregress. So we get these tokens and we concatenate them to the original input prompts. And we continue the decoding process. In the second iteration, we will have new tokens being generated. And it is very possible that in one of the decoding sequence, we would generate an end of sequence token. So if we have an end of sequence token, then the decoding process is finished for the output sequence C. So because we are using a very naive batching process, we need to wait that the output sequence A and B are decoded as well. So we would continue the process with an end of sequence token that we would input for the C sequence, and we will continue the decoding process. So let's imagine that in the third iteration, we have a new incoming request from a user D, and this new incoming request needs to wait because the other sequences are not finished to be decoded. This is idle waiting that those sequences are finished to be decoded. Again, the sequence C, we need to make sure that the sequence A and B are finished to be decoded before we can do anything about it. So we continue the process. So we input in the third iteration this batch and we get the different tokens for the different sequences. Again, we continue the autoregressive process and we append the tokens to that batch. So this is very inefficient because we need to wait that all the sequences are finished to be decoded to provide a response to the user. And all the incoming requests are idle waiting for the current batch to be decoded. So now let's look at continuous batching. So continuous batching is very simple. It's basically rebatching the process at each iteration instead of just doing it once at the beginning of the decoding process. So let's imagine that we have an input prompt that is from user B, and this input prompt is inputted into the LLM, and the first decoded token is going to token B here, and we will be able to append this decoded token here in this input prompt. Now let's imagine that we have new incoming requests. So we have the incoming request A and the incoming request C. So instead of waiting for the decoding process for the B sequence to be finished, we're going to rebatch the request and we will be able to now continue the decoding with this new batch. 
and we have a new batch that we input into the LLM and we can continue the decoding process. So this way, the sequence A and the sequence C are not waiting idle that the sequence B finished to be decoded. We can continue the decoding of the sequence B as we start the decoding of the sequence A and C. And we continue this autoregressive process where we generate new tokens, so we append them in such a way that we can continue the decoding process. In the third iteration, let's imagine that for the sequence C, the generated token is the end of sequence token. Instead of waiting for all the sequences to be decoded, we can now use this finished sequence and we can directly send it to the client and we can rebatch the other sequences. And we just continue the decoding process for those sequences and the sequence C did not need to wait for all the sequences to be decoded. And the fourth iteration, we only deal with the remaining sequences. So if you are building an application that is supposed to handle multiple requests and the requests are supposed to be text generated responses, you need to make sure that you're smart about the way you batch the different input requests and in the way you are decoding the responses. And continuous batching is one good strategy that you may use for your application. <laughs>